Okay, so shifting to the market bands, and, and I think you've given some really good uh, examples of why you need to understand the different segments. You need to understand which segments are looking at your properties, deciding whether strategically you are trying to appeal to all of them or whether you're, you've got properties that are targeting certain segments, which can be a strategy. Um, you know, what are, what are some of the technology specific things that, that fit into certain market bands or that if you're focusing on new construction versus retrofit that you should keep, on mind, keep in mind. And I'll, I'll, I'll punt the first one to, to Tammy. If you had any advice for someone that's maybe looking at, at B and C class, because you said that had been your, your best experience, who are looking to retrofit, you know, what would you tell them? You know, one thing that I didn't mention um, is the introduction of USBs and smart plugs. You have to, at this point, have USB plugs or C plugs in your apartment homes or ways to convert that because the, the year of the wall plug and the additional plug, it's gone. They want to be able to immediately put their USB in and their charger and, you know, not have to worry about an additional piece. So again, it's, it's another additional thing, right? They don't want that. Nobody wants that anymore. When I go to a hotel room and I want to check in, if there's not USB ports, I'm immediately like, oh, how old is this place, right? So <laughs> providing that small bit of technology can go a long way as well. Yeah, that seems like a pretty simple one that, that's easy to go through and retrofit. Other thoughts along those veins? Yeah, we're, we've seen a lot more of that. And they're, and they're low cost upgrades, right? And But they instantly reposition a property as being fresh and all that kind of stuff. Charging surfaces, you mm -hmm. know, contact charging surfaces mm -hmm. in certain areas, thinking about work from home, you know, how do we accommodate in certain market bands, you know, a lot of young professionals, right, who are working hybrid work. And uh, I, I know, you know, built in workspaces are kind of passe now because we think flex space, but anticipating where the optimal places will be uh, and that all the charging plugs and, you know, everything's in the lighting is just right for work from home. Um, th th this, you may think about this, but um, we do a lot of research among gamers, right? Uh, and we do, we're probably one of the biggest gaming research companies in the world uh, outside of smart home. And a lot of young people, I mean, in certain market bands, I mean, gaming is a lifestyle, right? And so anticipating from an entertainment standpoint, you know, how to optimize that experience. Again, with smart lighting, you can do that in some really cool ways. People are decking out you know, there's spaces now with the LED strips mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, you know, lighting control settings, those are easy. So, you know, again, if you know the lifestyle attributes of your market bands, like what do they like to do? You know, if they're outdoorsy types, you know, do they need storage for things, you know? Mm. Like, do they have a small kayak that, <laughs> you know? Right. I, I'm thinking of family members, you know? And they live in apartments or condos, and they got a kayak standing on their, you know, but there's because there's no out store. On the balcony. And out <laughs> on the balcony, right? So, yeah, so understanding lifestyle attributes is really important, I think, and then trying to figure out, is there any way you can help accommodate uh, some of those things? It's not something we normally think about, I think. Uh, for <clears throat> properties that, that maybe haven't done analysis on their existing uh, user base that want to try to segment, what's the best way to go about doing that? Call me. No. <laughs> yeah, how's that a softball? Yeah, I mean, really, I mean, if you're, if you're a, a substantially sized organization, you really should have done very careful segmentation. Uh, and that takes quanti quanti quantifiable data, right? And so, you know, basically, we have segmentation models where we ask a slew of questions about um, use cases, about lifestyle attributes, about uh, fears. Like, are, how tech phobic are they? Or are they not tech phobic? How price sensitive are they? And so we go through maybe 50 attributes, right? And then we mathematically cluster them and it's, you know, there's a lot of data science to it. But then you arrive at a much more nuanced understanding of who these groups are and then what messaging that you need to, you know, what value propositions will resonate best with them. So that's kind of how we people like us approach it. You know, you talk about market bands. Uh, some of the wins I can think of uh, that we've had over the last couple of years, but that were unexpected, um, had to do with uh, properties that catered to maybe a particular ethnic group um, where we could add into what normally would be a very kind of um, low common denominator bulk video package. All of a sudden, there was, a, there was a, an ethnic channel um, that was included in the mix. And maybe it only cost the operator two or three dollars per door to add that in, 
but it kind of became the talk of the town, where it gets around that this channel. And another one is, you know, we had a property, a luxury property in the Pacific Northwest, and again, for $3.50, we added the Pac-12 network, you know, to the mini cable pack that was included. It was a, a huge win. It was all residents could talk about was we get the Pac-12 network for free. Well, you don't really get it for free. It's, it's part of the part of the suite of products that your operator has assembled for you, um, but it was a huge win. So, you know, you really have to know your market and figure out, you know, how you can get so much bang for your buck that so residents are going to talk about it, word gets around, and, it, you know, it can, it can start to be a thing for your property. I know we're talking about, you know, the differences in those bands, but the one common theme that we've seen in terms of the the prospect, right, I keep bringing it back to leasing because that's what I know best, um, is self-guided tour. We're seeing 75% of consumers want to do it on their own. It takes them 15 minutes, whereas an in-person tour can last up to an hour and a half. Wait, let me get this, let me get the documentation, or let's golf cart over there, let's look at the one unit that you can, you know, fit your life into this square peg round hole. Um, now they can go in at their leisure, whether you have a smart lock or not, you can even use QR codes through an app that will advertise the property at, or the features within the home in order to you know, entice them to say, this is the truly best fit for me. Um, so you know, when it comes to new construction, definitely I, my best advice is going with those, uh, those door locks that you know, enable those, that smart access. Um, and retrofit, make it make sense for you guys, right? When it comes to having uh, maybe one or two units for touring, you can do the smart locks and then everybody else regular key, right? Um, and, and make that make sense.